Okay, so let's start the webinar. Uh, good morning, good evening, everyone. A warm welcome to all of you. Thank you to each one of you for taking the time to join us today. My name is Priya Chakravarti and I will be the host for this session. We are excited to have you here. As you all know, today's webinar is, the, is on the benefits of multi-vendor private 5G network. Let me give you a little logistic details before we begin the webinar. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat box or use the QA section. We will address them during our QA segment, which is in the end of the webinar. And we are recording the session, so and we will be sharing with you afterward. Um, Milin, can you share the screen? I think there is some issue. Yeah, okay. The screen yeah. Down. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the screen is there. Priya, you want to introduce yes, yes. the speaker? So. Yeah, I want to introduce the speaker. Yeah, so let me introduce to our speaker for the for today's webinar. Um, Itush Patra is the Head of Network and Infrastructure Strategy and Automation from Tata Communication. Hi, Kenny, President Global Partnership, Head of Marketing Peer from Druid Software. Abel Mile, SVP of Technology and Marketing, Airspan Networks. And Shiram Rupanagunda is the CEO and Co-Founder, Arna.ml. Welcome, everyone. So let's dive into today's session. I will hand over the slide to Shiram to take it forward. Over to you, Shiram. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Priya and uh, uh, Milin. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Um, so let me give the, um, the contents of, of today's webinar. So first we start with the promise of the private 5G, and then uh, we'll talk about the different options like such as single vendor and a multi-vendor and uh, uh, and next we talk about the pre-integrated uh, multi-vendor solution uh, private 5g solution um, next we talk about arna's uh, orchestration followed by the airspan's uh, ran solution and uh, druid's 5g code which actually make up the the part of the private 5g and uh, we also have a, uh, a customer's perspective from Tata Communications, which uh, uh, Itush will cover. And then we have a short demo um, followed by the Q&A. So that's what we're going to cover today. Yeah, you can go to the next slide. The... All right, so now let's talk about the, the promise of the private 5G, right? So. Uh, the there are several technical attributes for 5G which make it very attractive for uh, private wireless LAN for sensitive traffic. Uh, I'm not going to talk about all of them. Uh, you can you can see it on the left hand side. Uh, but the the main ones are you know obviously the bandwidth, the end to end latency, the reliability, uh, and then there are advanced features like network slicing. So all of them make it very attractive for um, using it in a uh, in a private wireless LAN. Now, uh, the value actually increases when you pair it with uh, edge applications. For example, in a private network, you may want to start up uh, computer vision or V2X, robotics, uh, AR, VR. So there are lots of these applications uh, which can be started um, uh, in, in the private 5G network. And some of the segments, uh, uh, private 5G segments are list, listed here. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list, but these are uh, the most popular ones, such as the industry 4.0, the warehouses, the construction, healthcare, um, and, uh, and anyway, Tata Communications will talk about some of their uh, plans in, in, in this area. Yeah, if you can go to the next slide, please. Perfect. So now that we've talked about the private 5G network, uh, what are the options for somebody who wants to deploy that, right? So there are two options. 
One is a single vendor option, which is a vertically integrated solution. Um, this is a monolithic, um, somewhat inflexible, um, and obviously it's uh, it's expensive. It's coming from a single vendor, um, and there is a vendor lock-in technology and a vendor lock-in, and uh, you're also dependent on that specific vendor's professional services because they are the ones who know, and it's typically a closed technology, so you have to depend on their professional services. Now, coming to the multi-vendor solution, uh, what are the attributes, right? So, so first it is disaggregated. So you can actually pick and choose the best of the breed of different components. And we'll talk about those components uh, subsequently. Um, you have a better control on the functionality because you are going to get best of the breed. Um, and it's obviously more cost-effective because uh, you have multiple vendors, so yeah, you have more leverage. Um, there is no vendor lock-in because uh, at least some of the pieces you can replace the vendor if uh, you know if you want to go with a different vendor. Uh, the user journey is uh, simplified. Um, so these are some of the characteristics of the multi-vendor solution. Yeah, I can go to the next slide. All right, so now we'll talk about both single vendor and uh, the multi-vendor solutions and what are some of the pros and cons. So with single vendor solution, like I mentioned before, um, you know the uh, the technology elements are fixed because it's coming from a single vendor. So all the all the uh, components that you see on the left hand side, so they are all sort of fixed elements. Um, limited use cases because they typically might cater to a specific vertical or, or a few verticals. Uh, and we've talked about the vendor lock in and and the, and the cost part, but. The advantage there is that it's convenient because it's all coming from one vendor, so you it's all tested and you know everything works together. Now let's talk about the multi-vendor solution. You can go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> yeah. So now, what are the characteristics of multi-vendor solution? Right. So we've talked about some of these: the best-in-class components. Uh, you have flexible. Deployment topologies, so you can actually deploy it in multiple ways, uh, which some of that we'll talk about. Um, multiple user cases can be covered, um, cost effective. But the caveat here is that it needs some assembly, right? So you have to pick and choose from different vendors. So you have to integrate them, you have to test them, um, validate. Um, so that's uh, that. That's the uh, the the negative part of the multi-vendor solution. Now let's talk about how we address that, that, that part of it. Yeah, if you can go to the next slide. So now what if you could have best of the both worlds, right? So you have the flexibility of the multi-vendor solution, but you have the convenience of a single vendor solution. So what's the convenience? The convenience is that everything works together, right? So you don't have to go through the hassle of putting all these components together, testing them, you know, finding out all the interop issues. So all of them, if somebody takes care of all of that, right? And you have the convenience of a single vendor solution, but at the same time, you have the benefit of the, the, all the multi-vendor solutions, all the flexibility, right? So that's exactly what, uh, what we're gonna talk about today. <clears throat> so in this, uh, we will um, talk about how we put together the solution um, with Arna's uh, orchestrator, Airspan's uh, RAN solution and uh, Druid's uh, 5G core. And then there are a few other components. So we uh, put all of them together um, and then uh, it, it's all tested. <clears throat> so we'll talk about the features of, uh, of this integrated solution today. Yeah, can you go to the next slide, please? All right, so now let's talk about the individual components. Um, so first I'll talk about uh, the Arna's uh, uh, pre-integrated private 5G solution, right? So um, this is uh, so this this is actually uh, has all the components in it. So this is how uh, the, the solution has been put together. So the box in the middle is the private 5G orchestration from, uh, from Arna. And uh, uh, at the bottom, you see the different components, the airspans, uh, uh, EMS, uh, AC, which is an ACP, um, the Druid's 5G core, uh, and also some of the edge applications. And these are dependent on the specific use cases. 
So in the demo, we show it with some of the uh, applications, but you know, of course they can use, uh, uh, the customers can pick up other uh, edge use cases, edge applications. Now, the, the advantage of this is that it's fully integrated. Uh, it's a zero touch. Uh, so you configure all of this once and uh, you know, with, uh, with the click of a button and setting some, you know, some day zero parameters, you can, you can deploy it in multiple sites. And it's production ready because we've gone through the process of validating all of these components together. And, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, some of the customer choices include uh, edge applications. For example, they can have computer vision or AR, VR, or any of those applications for specific verticals, right? So, and there are a few other choices which the customer can make. Um, you know, we of course have done that with certain uh, components components, but uh, they're free to choose, you know, choose them. For example, the cache layer and the virtualization um, <clears throat> and also the bare metal servers, right? So, so we've used certain um, servers uh, for, for this integration, but uh, these are these are basically off the shelf servers. So they can, they can pick other uh, vendors as well. So that's how the solution has been uh, put together. Yeah, can go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so let me quickly cover the solution advantages. So some of them we've already talked about in the in the previous slides. Um, so one is zero touch, as I mentioned. You know, all of the components you can you can create a template and then uh, with a click of a button you can deploy that with uh, certain parameters. Um, it's pre-integrated, as I talked about. Um, you know, all the interop with all being validated. Um, the the deployments can be very so you can have uh, them centrally hosted. You can have them on-prem. You can have a hybrid configuration where you have certain things hosted in a central site and uh, certain components hosted on your uh, customer's uh, data centers. Uh, so it's a, it's a very flexible deployment. Uh, the use cases are also uh, flexible because you can pick different edge applications, as I mentioned. And uh, the single most advantage is a single pane of glass, right? With all these different components, you don't have to go to um, you know the, the different screens and look at different things, uh, what they call as a swiveling chair problem, right? So you don't have to keep changing your screens. You can see everything in, uh, in, in, in one uh, single pane. Uh, again, we'll, we'll show that in the demo. Um, the multi-tenancy, the solution is, uh, is fully multi-tenanted. So from a single um, deployment, you can actually cater to multiple um, tenants and multiple locations. So for example, a customer may have uh, different edge locations, different factories. So we can, uh, you can deploy them from a central location. The, uh, the next thing is a day two operations, right? So, so one, the first part is a day zero, once you deploy everything. But then um, the problem is not going to end there, right? So there will continue to be problems in in during the uh, during the course of operations. Uh, so you may have to change things, you may have to change some certain parameters, you may have to uh, look at some errors and do some auto corrections. So all of that is is is, is simplified uh, with with this uh, integrated solution. And uh, lastly, the uh, you know nothing is complete these days without a Gen AI. So we have a operations uh, which are Gen AI assisted. Uh, so you can simplify a lot of the operations uh, with, with, with Gen AI. Gen AI. Yeah, can go to the next slide. Yeah, so now let me talk about uh, Arna Samkop and then I'll hand it off to uh, the others for airspan and uh, uh, druid um, and also the customer uh, viewpoint um, so the arna samcop uh, is uh, shown in the block diagram here um, it's uh, essentially an orchestration and automation across multiple layers so it can go all the way from infrastructure to the network services to the applications uh, which is essentially what we're doing in this case so you are actually orchestrating the bare metal uh, and also some of the network infrastructure like switches, 
um, and then the virtualization layer uh, followed by the airspans uh, ran and uh, the druid score and some of the edge applications the the radio um, so all of them are orchestrated from a single orchestrator um, it also supports uh, open loop and closed loop uh, some of them we are not showing in the demo but these features are supported uh, open loop essentially means you can you can look at all the events uh, alerts and some of that we'll show in the in the demo uh, the closed loop is more advanced where you can take some auto corrections based on these events um, similarly there are uh, there is rbac for multi tenancy so there are multiple users administrator operator tenants and each of them have their own uh, um, uh, the access permissions so each of them can do only certain things that they are allowed to do uh, and lastly there is also a rest based interface so the demo is actually shown with a with a with a nice gui uh, but all of this actually can be run through uh, rest apis so if uh, somebody needs to automate all of that as uh, as part of the devops um, that that can be done as well Yeah, can go to the next slide, please. All right, let me hand it off to you, uh, Amel. You can, you can probably go ahead. Thank you, Emily. Thank you for this nice introduction. Um, for the last five years, uh, Espen has been involved in hundreds of private networks deployments. Um, and we have found three key elements that makes a fiber private network successful. The first one is that you need to look for a for a problem to solve with 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 five right if you have an existing technology like wi-fi even wireline that does the job then we believe that there is no and there is no much um, point of going in a proof of concept to find a solution that doesn't uh that for a problem that doesn't exist yet the second key ingredient is the the radio part the, the radio is the most visible part, uh, maybe complex part of the network. Uh, you know where to place the radio. You have to know what type of uh, connectivity you have there. If you have uh, optical fiber or you have only uh, standard IT internet. So the message here is that there is no one size fits all. And the third part that we have learned uh, to make a, a, a successful 5G private network is that you need to bring an end-to-end -end solution. Doesn't bring a benefit if Aspen comes just with the radio uh, and with no, you know, with uh, the rest of the parts that brings the, a 5G private network. So, so having good partners uh, is essential uh, for for covering this uh, this aspect. So, when you look at our building blocks for our solution, uh, they are focusing on these three main areas to have a, a private network successful. The first one comes from experience, right? We have the I think so far 500 uh, private networks. And we know exactly which use cases and verticals can benefit from a 5G private network. The second point, uh, it was about not one, one side doesn't fit all, means that we have to bring a broad portfolio. As you know, uh, Espan uh, is based on open run architecture. So that means that we have a, a CU, a central unit, a DU, distributed unit, and a radio, radio unit, um, using the Oran Alliance uh, splits. So and we have seen that this works very well for certain use cases. Um, normally for this, uh, for this type of, of uh, deployments, you need to have optical fiber to connect the, the radio itself. But also uh, from the experience, you see that there are um, verticals, for example, in smart city, where they don't get, they don't get uh, optical fiber in all the lampposts. So they have for maybe copper or they have like a, a standard ethernet. So what we did is like, we still keep the branch of the software. We only have one branch of software that is full open run. But instead of having that desegregated architecture, we bring back the CUDD inside the radio, right? In that case, we have a radio that is easier to install. You can have the, 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 the whole CUDU desegregation and you can connect it, for example, directly with Ethernet. So what we're bringing here in the game with a broad portfolio is not just the size of the radio, meaning of the power of the radio, if it's a small cell, indoor, outdoor, or a macro, it's also the different type of architectures that tailor the needs of the, of the deployment characteristics that you have for that specific use case. And the third one, uh, building block, is about uh, to, to provide an end-to-end -end solution. 
And to do so, what we do is like we have our brain of the solution called <clears throat> S-Band Control Platform. This is the network management system. Basically, it's the one who takes care of um, configuring, uh, managing, monitoring our radios. And also they have like X applications like uh, multi-tenancy or, you know, also we have like CBRS, SaaS connectivity um, uh, for the US, uh, from the US market. And what we do here is that we added a layer called North Path Interface where we open AP APIs uh, to have access to all these elements of our control platform. So this is what enables these partnerships, like for example, with Arma to create this umbrella <clears throat> that they can bring this uh, single pan of glass, uh, seeing the whole solution, multi-vendor, as one unique solution. So this is what we bring on the building blocks to create successful uh, private network deployments. Thank you. So I let, I think, uh, Tat from Druid is the next to speak. Gracias, Eva. If you can uh, move to the next slide, please. Excellent, thank you. So yeah, we're really delighted to be here as part of this solution. I'd echo what Abel said. Um, we play a very important part as the core, as the core technology platform, which is called Ramus. But it's very important to have good, good Geno B partners like Airspan, as, uh, as Abel said, we have over 100 networks around the world together. Drew have over 5,000 private networks around the world over, over 24 years. Um, and it's really important to be working with Arna here that are making the orchestration and overall management of the solution um, much easier. And then to have Tata to, um, to deliver it to their customers. So the part that Druid play, we're, um, we're a market leader in enterprise uh, 5G, 4G, right back to 2G there, as you can see, um, technology platforms. So we can deliver um, small or large single uh, private networks. And then if it's, you know, be it a port or be it a factory, a warehouse, we can deliver multiple of those cores very easily with these partners. Uh, we also support inbound and outbound roaming, which, uh, you know, I think that's pretty obvious, but just to describe a, pot a potential scenario where, you know, we've, we've been doing it for years with shipping companies where they have containers with SIMs in them, they're monitoring telemetry of high value uh, food, goods like bananas, let's say, at sea, making sure that uh, the ripening process is going according to plan. And then when those containers come into port, they need to be able to roam into the, uh, the country that they're tra traveling on, on the, on the truck, for example. That's, that's just one example where that can be very useful. We also support dual provisioning there, as you can see. We work with mobile operators, uh, like our, our relationship with, uh, with Proximus would be well known. Um, in Europe and then many other MNOs around the world. So there we're delivering a, um, an extension of their public network into the business, um, you know, for dedicated resilience and, um, you know, local data breakout security, all of those good things. And then we're also a market leader in neutral host RAN sharing. Um, another way to describe that would be providing five bars of, of coverage for mobile operators. Um, uh, in building, you know, in casinos, we, we've done this, we've done it in a lot of university campuses in the United States as well. And one of the key drivers there is actually delivering the E911 calls. So they need coverage all over the university campus uh, for the students. So they're able to make calls on the public network emergency calls. So that's one of the drivers there. Um, and yeah, we're supp also supporting Wi-Fi integration now. So Wi-Fi is going to be there. So this is, uh, this is really about integrating 5G uh, with Wi-Fi and using 5G for the, the obvious reasons, those business and mission critical reasons that it needs to be there for. Uh, next slide, please. So just delving a little bit on this slide into the, um, the Ramus platform, yeah, thank you. So it's very feature rich uh, and well known around the market. Um, you know, some examples I'd call out here are the, not just the 5G standalone capability, but the NSA, the non-standalone capability. So a lot of operators are still, you know, migrating their, um, their technology from 4G to 5G as they go. Ultra low latency is a common requirement. We were one of the first to deliver a location uh, management function in our core a few years ago. 
Um, we also have our own version of slicing as well as supporting uh, that, you know, slicing right through to the radio endpoint. So there we're helping to, um, to dedicate uh, different use cases, you know, let's say if it's video, if it's push to talk, whatever the, the business really needs to dedicate um, that use case on their network, we can easily dedicate the application or the devices. Um, and then the Open REST API is, I, I guess it's obvious here how easy we're making it to integrate with Arna and with the whole team. Um, the PBX integration continues to be really important in some of the hospitals that we've won this year, being able to integrate to the PABX that's um, that's on site, the various different brands that are available there. I think the um, the six key points, though, just to cover them, you know, device prioritization, that, that slicing capability, uh, the, the ability to scale down, you know, private networks are, are getting bigger and bigger now. We're starting to test to, to 1 million and above um, UEs and devices, but the ability to start with 5, 10, 50, 100, 500 devices, you know, to start small, that's that's really important at the beginning of the journey with the customer. Mm -hmm. um, the open API and making it easy to integrate. And then um, being radio agnostic is very important. Uh, Airspan are one of our, our best partners. Um, but we're also, you know, working in, in other areas, in different bands, um, in different technologies. So it's important to be, if there's incumbent radios there, to be able to integrate with those easily. Um, being flexible in our deployment model, whether it's a hyperscaler, you know, high availability data center, or maybe it's just a backpack solution, or it's a solution in a vehicle or a solution on bare metal in a small building. That flexibility is really important. And then we make it really easy to use. Over to you, Atush. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for giving me opportunity to speak about the uh, perspective from the TCL about the private 5G network. Spring, private 5G network as a industrial connectivity as a service. Mm -hmm. It's a tailor-made solution to meet the all industries vertical use cases requirement. So let me share some perspectives first. Uh, See, we are in the uh, middle of the industry 4.0 revolution journey. Our destination is not the digitalization. It is the step of the journey where we are starting the uh, digitalization process. In this transformation, it's a huge paradigm shift for uh, integrating uh, um, operating model as well as the innovate the, the things. And industrial automation, which is the cornerstone of this journey, and uh, which required the system machine work process to be integrated seamlessly with some underlying technologies, whether it is a 5G, whether it is a IoT, AI ML, to improve the industry productivity and efficiencies. In this journey, we require the three key pillars to make a successful or make the industrial automations more productivity. First is the secure and reliable connectivity. Then second is the uh, scalable connectivity to meet the requirements. Third is the seamless integration with the whole ecosystem of the existing network. By understanding all these requirements, TCL done extensively study with the all the industry vertical use case requirements as well as industry vertical architectural requirement. He designed this product as a private 5G network to provide a seamless connectivity and industrial connectivity as a service to provide all these kind of vertical industries. It is a purely tailor-made to understand what is exactly the requirement from, from each industry models. If I take an example about the materials and mining industries, where there are a lot of varieties of the use cases in terms of the video surveillance, drone-based surveillance, and then heavy earth moving machineries, vehicles, boulder detections, so these are the key use cases from the mining industries. If I'll move to the 
manufacturing industries where there are a lot of uh, machinery equipments uh, for the automobile industry there are some connectivities of the high definition cameras as well as the sensors as well as the some issue processing devices where we upgrade upgrade the final software of the finishing products of the car if i'll move to the uh, seaport industries automated crane management vehicle tracking system fleet management system shipment of the container from the cpr to the uh, the store bags so wide range of the use cases where it required very dynamic planning and uh, dynamic uh, requirement to fulfill these use cases so why tcl choose the multi vendor solution here to to provide the best architecture fit to the industry requirement and every industry required a different scale of the version small form factor scale down version of the software to fulfill those requirements to manage those whole ecosystem we required a, a single platform which can manage the enter into a network life cycle management so the design principle behind this platform requirements is the single platform to manage any kind of technologies any network component any kind of applications with the two dimensional aspects if i look at uh, one is the service delivery aspects where we requirements should be faster and accelerate go to the market and it will reduce the human errors during the delivery time if i look at the second aspects of this which is a service assurance aspects where we required a single window view of the entire ecosystem of the network starting from the end devices till the network component then applications we required everything should be view in a sync with the sls with the unified kpis where we can say single person can monitor everything in the single view second aspects uh, in this uh, in the service assurance side uh, where uh, it will support the real time monitoring of the network and it can monitor the fault and performance as well and uh, also it can notify uh, in a real time basis if any fault is detected through the different channels to to the field engineer so that the corrective action can be taken on time to prevent the network last aspects not the least so is the inventory management the entire network stack ecosystems inventory will be stored in the in the platform so that we can view we can understand how is the which software version is there what is the component is there what is their ip address what is the host name all these informations can be captured as a inventory view of these things and we have covered uh, we have covered almost all the industries to fulfill the their use case requirements as well as the the connectivity requirements to meet the customer needs to fulfill the exact how the operation model can be implemented for the industrial requirements so with this uh, i will con conclude my notes i'll request to take the uh, hand over to the next slide to sri ram yeah milit if you can move right yeah thanks thanks itush uh, that was very uh, very very helpful uh, in terms of the the perspective of uh, the customer uh, so what uh, what we're going to show in the demo is uh, uh, is the topology that we're showing here so essentially there are two so there is a central location pop location where uh, the orchestrator deployed along with uh, some of the ran components and then there is an edge site on the right hand side which is uh, 
where some of the other other components, uh, the five G core and um, uh, the other other components are uh, are deployed, and they could be multiple such sites. But in the demo, we show it with uh, with one of them. Yeah, you can go to the next slide. So these are the demo steps. Um, again, I will uh, while the demo is going on, I will try to explain each of those. Um, but due to the uh, the time constraints, you know, the it might go a little fast because there is so much to show. Uh, but we'll be we'll be sharing the recording anyway, so you can you can you can watch it subsequently. But in the demo, what we're going to show is uh, first we create a tenant. So as I said, this is a multi-tenant solution, right? So from a single uh, orchestration site, you create uh, you can create any number of tenants. So we create one tenant and we also uh, onboard one of the edge sites. So you can again onboard multiple sites, but in the demo we show with one edge site. And then we provision a bare metal server. As I mentioned, the orchestrator can go all the way from bare metal to network services and so on. So we provision a server and then we deploy a Kubernetes cluster because some of the components are uh, cloud native. So they, they can deploy it on the Kubernetes. And then uh, there are some physical components, right? So some of them are onboarded. So they're called PNFs, the physical functions. So you can also manage those physical functions from the orchestrator. So for, first you have to onboard them. So that is shown. And uh, then the topology intent is uh, is created. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a template, right? So because when you're deploying it for multiple tenants, you don't want to keep doing the same things uh, over and over again, right? So instead what you can do is create a template, um, which is which is really your topology intent, where you want specific components to be deployed. And then with the click of a button, you can do, you can do a deploy. So the first part is, uh, uh, you know, it's like a one, uh, you know, one time thing. And the deployment you can do any number of times um, with the minor changes, you know, there could be some configuration changes, IP addresses and so on. So you change them and then you can deploy them, right? So that's the that's the power of the you know the 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 zero touch uh, orchestration, and then lastly uh, monitor. So you can uh, once it's all deployed, you can do the day two monitoring where you can look at uh, performance events, the fault events, um, and 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 so on. And these are for different personas: the admin persona, the operator persona, and also the tenant also will have their own view, right? So they can see their own deployment and if there are any errors and so on. So you can see all of them in the uh, in, in the demo. So with that introduction, let me quickly jump to the demo. Okay, I hope you all can see the screen. Yes. Okay, let me play the demo and I will uh, I'll walk through. So the first is the login screen. Uh, once the admin logs in, so the first step, as I mentioned, is adding a tenant, right? So in this case, we are adding one one tenant. So you can see that the tenant is added, and then you can go to the dashboard. And so at the moment, there's nothing in the dashboard because uh, nothing has been deployed. Uh, the tenant is just created. Uh, so you can see all of the uh, parameters that you can you can see on the dashboard. And then as I mentioned, you know, you're going to add an edge site to that tenant. So this is specific to each tenant, right? So for each tenant, there could be one or more edge sites. So in this case, we are adding one edge site uh, in, in Pune for, for this particular uh, uh, tenant. Yeah, so you can see that the edge is created. So, <clears throat> And you can see the users here. So as I mentioned, there are um, there are different permissions for each of the users. So the admin is the main administrator, uh, which in this case is the data communications. 
uh, the operator is their own uh, operator who can do certain functions, but not same as admin. And tenant is the individual tenants that you create, right? So each of them have different levels of uh, permissions. Yes. Now we're going to add a server in the edge side. Um, so you can see that the each edge side, you can add one or more servers where you're going to deploy all of these components. So you can see that there are certain parameters that you have to enter. The edges, the servers are orchestrated using Redfish APIs. Um, and then you have to provide certain um, parameters. So once you do that, the server gets uh, deployed. So you can automatically install uh, Kubernetes on that server, um, or you know they can choose to install it offline. And then there are certain uh, uh, parameters that uh, need to be configured on the server for uh, mainly for HA purposes. For example, you may need a uh, Ethernet bonding for the HA reasons. So some of these parameters are configured here. And again, this is all one-time operation. So you don't have to keep doing this uh, for every, every customer. So all the parameters related to the, the network bonding are, are provided here. And similarly, things like SRIOV for performance, so all of them are enabled on these uh, servers. So these are fairly standard parameters for setting up the, the, the bonding with all the gateway and the address ranges and, 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 and so on. So now we can see that the server is uh, provisioned. Uh, obviously this takes a little longer uh, in the demo, we skip all of that, but the server is provisioned, the OS is installed, the VLAN is configured, SRIO is configured. Uh, the Kubernetes is a uh, Robin, uh, IO. So the Robin is also installed. The cluster is onboarded. Uh, so all of them are performed uh, uh, automatically. So you can also see the details of the of the servers. So here we're going to show the um, creating uh, applications. So in this case, it's actually the RAN application. Um, so we are going to onboard uh, the airspans uh, uh, RAN components here. So you can see that the RAN is added. Um, so we did not show the core, but the core is also added. And we also add uh, one Nginx application just as an illustration. Um, it's strictly not required for this uh, demo, but uh, we show that as, a, a, as an example. So you can see that the, uh, you know, the, there are multiple uh, uh, elements in the catalog. And here we're going to deploy one of these applications, the Nginx application. Again, this is uh, not related to the private 5G, but it, this can be anything. In, instead of Nginx, it can be some computer vision or, or any other Mac application. So that can be deployed uh, independently. So you can see that uh, the Nginx is running now. Now we're going to add the network devices. Uh, so in this case, uh, <clears throat> so we're going to onboard uh, a PNF, that's a physical function. And it's a switch application, right? So it's a 
even though we call it an application, it's it's really a physical function. So we onboard that. So now is the is the important part. So this is where you're going to create a template, right? So this template is where you mention all the different components that you require, right? So uh, could be RAN, core, uh, what else you require uh, in in that in that uh, uh, topology. So all of them are created as a template. So let's see how that uh, that happens. So you say that we are using RAN and we are using HA mode. Um, so you are including a firewall. Um, so once the template is uh, created, you can deploy a template. Right? So deployment is essentially instantiating a, a specific template. Right. So you can, uh, as I mentioned, creating creation of the template is a one-time operation, but then you can deploy it any number of times using the same template. So in this case, you are uh, you are deploying it uh, in one of the edge sites, and it shows the the parameters that are there by default. So you can see all of the parameters for each, you know, for core, for RAN, for switch, and you can choose to modify some of them. For example, some of the IP addresses may need to be modified at each site, right? So, uh, so even though you know most of the parameters are common, there may be some differences for. Uh, deploying them at day zero. So those can be modified uh, here. And another thing to notice here is that there are actually two switches here, two switch applications. There's one active and one standby. So it's a HA configuration. So you can configure both the active and the standby in this case. And again, make whatever changes that are required for uh, for the day zero. And then there are certain things that you may have to uh, import, such as the GNB configuration and so on. Um, so once you do that, you can see that an instance is created, right? So the instance is essentially derived from a template with certain modifications. So that is now created, uh, which essentially means that now everything is deployed, right? So, so now you can go back and see what the topology is. So this is our topology. So the firewall, switch, RAN, core, all of them are uh, uh, deployed. So it's, uh, it's still initializing uh, some of these functions, bringing them up. Yeah, so now it is, uh, it's complete and it's uh, instantiated. So you can see each of those components, the RAN, the core, the transport, which includes the firewall and the switch. So you can see, uh, let me just rewind a little bit. Um, you can see the picture of the topology. Yeah, so this is the topology that I showed in the slide, um, which essentially is uh, now uh, deployed or instantiated. So you can see that there is uh, the pop location where uh, the ACPs and CAR are running. Uh, there's a router and then there's a uh, the edge location where the core and the firewall are running. And you can see two elements here. There is a active and the standby. It's a HA configuration. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and and if there are any other things that, that also will get shown here. So in this case, there is a radio uh, and then the router on the other side. Now you can click on each of those in the topology and look at their uh, details. So you can look at the core, for example, uh, see all the parameters related to the Druid. And you can, you can look at uh, 
firewall, transport, or any of the parameters on the uh, in the in the topology. You can view them. Yeah, so now what we're going to show is uh, the alerts and the performance. So you can see the buttons on the far right. So using which you can uh, can monitor. So now the day zero is done, right? So everything is deployed. Now it's in running state. So now uh, there may be some ongoing alerts, some errors uh, in the field, uh, which you can now monitor. So you can see that there are 10 alarms um, and you can look at those details for core, for RAN, for switch, for all of them you can see uh, from a single screen, you can see all of their uh, faults or alarms. You can also look at the performance. You can look at the throughput, uplink, downlink. Um, all of them are shown um, in, 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 a, in the performance uh, screen. So you can see all the, the the inventory and the details about each of those inventories. Yeah, you can see all the software deployments, which are essentially all the cloud native functions that are running all the license files related to all these components. Um, all of them can be viewed from a single uh, pane of glass. So again, we've shown everything through the administrator's uh, persona. So you can see now in a dashboard. Uh, so this is essentially the administrator's dashboard, right? So they can see the, the faults, the performance, the bandwidth, all of them are uh, uh, graphically shown. And you can see the, on the on the map, the locations. So there are two locations. Um, you know, in the demo, we use only one of them, the the Pune location. But there is another edge location also here. And these dashboards are configurable, so you can actually decide to have the ones that you want to focus on and not not have everything. So now we're going to log out of the admin, right? So um, yeah, so now what we don't show in the demo is uh, you can also log in as a tenant and view their own uh, uh, deployments and their, their status. Um, so we are we're not showing it at the demo, but all of them are, are, uh, are, are possible. So with that, we come to the end of the demo. Um, so obviously we are not showing, you know, all the features uh, because of the lack of time, but um, this is essentially what we wanted to share today. So with that, I'll stop sharing and uh, we can open it up for uh, the Q&A. So Priya, if there are any yeah, questions. Yeah, I'm uh, just, yes, I'm just checking. Yeah, so um, yeah, the first question it has come up. What are the future use case TCL planned in the orchestration orchestrator roadmap? So I think Itush, you can answer this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Priya. Okay, so by understanding uh, when we are talking to a lot of industries, verticals, there are a lot of queries are coming by considering all these requirements. We have, uh, we have prepared some uh, list of the future requirement use cases. Uh, one of them is like a correlation engine where uh, automatically the faults should be detected we should create some kind of uh, automated or intelligence uh, rca uh, then second is the like a closed loop automations where uh, if some fault is detected or anything is detected in the system it should automatically rectified with the feedback uh, loop uh, actions and uh, of course and almost all the industries they are looking for a very granular level of the information insights from the system where they can do some advanced analytics by understanding each and every use cases their behaviors their pattern analysis 
to build the service level kpis and the last but not the least uh, which everybody is talking about the jni ai we are thinking about to be integral part of uh, this platform which can give you more advanced more efficient way to manage the network so these are the key factors we have consider for our future planning yeah thank you right. <clears throat> thank you thank you okay the so the next question is um airspin network have deployed a significant number of private networks around the world what are the key ingredients that make a private network successful and how does it relate to this webinar abel you okay good um yeah i mean there are many there are many ingredients right uh, but related to this webinar uh, is partnerships at the end when you have to create best of breed network you need to have a, a multi vendor type of approach that we are, this is what we're discussing here and to do so you have an entity that manages the whole system that is offered to the end customer for example in this case tcl right that you can see like a single pane of glass a right? single pane of glass so so basically what you know on in our point of view on on, on Aspen side we open our apis to fully manage our run system through our uh, Spam Culture uh, or Spam Culture platform. But the same happens with uh, the core, in this case, through it, and also the, the, the devices that we will have in the network. And that really creates an appealing proposal to, to, the, to the end customer, TCL, because they see that as a, as a very comprehensive solution. Although you have like several uh, vendors, behind this umbrella, everything is seen as one for the for the end customer. So this is one of the uh, great values that we're discussing here. But as I mentioned before, there are other type of uh, ingredients to create a, a successful private network. And this is a being laser focused on what is the problem that you're trying to solve, right? It is something that we see a lot. There are many use cases going on, uh, but there are specific ones that you can really leverage the use of, of, a, of a 5G network. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Um, how does your solution support the seamless orchestrations and management of private 5G networks, especially in a multi-vendor environment? Uh, Shiram, can you please take this? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So, so essentially, the way the way it works is that we can integrate, uh, you know, different, uh, uh, you know, different vendors. Uh, the platform itself is uh, is is very uh, open. Uh, so each vendor's integration essentially happens through uh, by developing a plugin or, or a Kubernetes controller for it. So that's essentially how we integrated, uh, for example, the Druid and uh, Airspan um, components into the into the orchestration. Thank you. Um... Okay, I see one more question. Um, can you elaborate on how Druid's 5G Remis core platform ensure low latency performance and scalability, particularly for the industries with high demand use cases like manufacturing, uh, healthcare, or utilities? Sure, happy to. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the Remis core platform ensures, ensures the low latency performance and scalability by leveraging um, the advanced network slicing. That we talked about earlier we we have traffic prioritization built in there as well and we're, we're optimizing the routing on the network so these features um, allow ramus to handle high demand use cases um, in industries like manufacturing healthcare utilities where we see uh, you know real-time responses are, are critical thank you um, I know we are almost uh, at the end of the webinar, but uh, someone is requesting me one more question. Uh, what are the different deployments models of orchestrator? TCL is planning for the customer. Okay, let me take these questions. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So when we we meet the industry's requirement, meeting the customers, and there are two categories of the customers. One is very sensitive, those who are very particular about there should not be any data across their boundaries. So it's a kind of a dedicated setup they required in their on-premises model, which 
all customers are very price, price sensitive kind of things. So we have divided into the two categories. One is a very dedicated deployment with a scaled down version of the uh, deployment, which can be dedicated for the very sensitive customers. Second one is a shared based model, which is a centralized deployment, which will be deployed in the data communication data center with a secured private connectivity kind of a MPLS connectivity to the ACE locations, or it is a IPsec based tunnel connectivity with a very, as the platform is designed to support the multi-tenancy. So we'll have a very secure and isolation prov provisioning for each and every customers. So this is the two model we look for by understanding the whole network and market requirements. Thank you, Itosh. Thank you so much. Um, I see uh, there are a lot of questions. We will try to jot down all the questions and come back to you. Uh, but I believe we have to close the webinar right now due to the time constraint. We have really enjoyed sharing the session with you and hope you all have. So stay tuned for our next webinar. And I uh, would like to thank you again, Shira, Mithu, Shebel, and Thai for the wonderful learning session we had today. Thank you, panelists, uh, for the constant support, Milin, Subhu, Nikhil, everyone. And yeah, let's stay tuned for the next webinar. Good day and good night, everyone. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye -bye.